All right, good morning. We're back up here with Bernadette this morning. <clears throat> I didn't work with her yesterday because I was trying to get the finishing touches on my round pen video and I worked her the day before and we had quite the battle on the ground again trying to get my foot in the stirrup. Finally got through that and I got her up to the rail and uh, I was able to finally get over the top of her and sit on her a little bit and so we made a good a good a good bit of progress on getting over the top of her and getting to sit on her and once I got her finally convinced her to get up there you know to the rail and let me get a leg over and sit down on her she wasn't bothered at all by me sitting on her and she didn't get tense, didn't get jumpy. It's just the fact of getting through that spot, that sticking spot, of allowing me to get over the top of her and get down on her. And it's kind of the same thing on the ground, you know, you fight and fight and fight and fight and then she finally decides to stand still and I can get my foot in the stirrup and stand up and get a little weight in the stirrup and get up alongside of her and get down without her blowing her gasket. So that's right now what's been preventing me from putting the first ride on her. But I was able to, you know, like I said, I was able to get on her and sit on her day before yesterday so we're gonna work this morning and I'm not gonna go to battle with her and try and get my foot in the stirrup I'm gonna work her and see how settled she is see if I can get her up to the rail and get over the top of her and get on her and we're just gonna kind of play it by ear maybe I'll be able to get a ride on her Today, and we'll see how things go. But it's all going to depend on her, her attitude with me, and whether I think I can do it safely. I'm not all that concerned about riding her the first time. I don't think she's going to get anything. I don't think she's going to you know, go to rearing up and humping around and doing a bunch of different bad stuff on the first ride. But I need to make sure that the beginning and the ending is gonna come out safely too. So, we worked pretty hard the day before yesterday and got her pretty settled you know, pretty worked and pretty settled before I started working on her. But most of it was a battle with the stirrup. So I don't want to have to go to battle with her first before I put the ride on her. I want, I want her to be in a good frame of mind and listening to me without having to get real tough on her because that's just kind of defeating the purpose if I have to get them upset and get me upset before I crawl on because if I'm upset when I get on I'm not thinking about how to keep her out of trouble and keep myself out of trouble I'm just thinking about being upset and being worn out too and it looks like I'm going to have to kick those babies out of here again too
All right. See, she's a little bit snorty and carried on. She's really kind of playing around with these guys. And that's something I don't want to have happen when I go to ride her the first time. I want her totally focused on the business at hand and what we're doing here. how all the little brombies are outside right now. I'm going to go put the gate down. Let them squirrel around out there for a bit. Pay attention over here. Pay attention over here. I've kind of kept myself up at night trying to think of what it is I'm not doing or should be doing. to try and get her over these bad spots. And I just can't, for the life of me, think of what I've done wrong to put her in this spot. I think it boils down to her attitude. The training that she's had in the past I think has kind of braced her up a little bit and made her not quite as willing to accept some things. Maybe they got into a bad spot with her. Something happened. And she's remembering it. I just, I don't know. All I can do is be patient, keep pinging away here. And keep pinging away until I can get some progress on her and figure things out. She's still a bit more interested in what's going on outside than paying attention over here to me. See that? And for a young horse, you know, that's not that unusual. She wants her buddies. She's insecure.
Pay attention to me. See, this is an issue that we're going to have now with these babies outside the fence. She's going to pay attention to them and lose track of where I'm at. And then want to get over there by them buddies again. So I'm going to go over and do something else here. I'm going to close that door completely so she can't see their feet down there. and try to get her focused up on me rather than on them babies. A horse's train of thought, any horse's train of thought, lasts about five seconds, whether they're doing something wrong or they're doing something good. If you don't praise them in five seconds and you don't chastise them within five seconds, they're thinking about something else. And they've completely forgot about what it is we're scaring them or bothering them. So, If I can get her mind off of those babies for a few minutes here and get her thinking and working with me, maybe we can get that ride. We'll just have to see how she works for me and how willing she is to settle down and stay on that rail until I can get set. The thing about this rail work too, when I go and put this first ride on her, I don't do it with just one rein. I have to do it with two. And that means tying my reins up so that she'll sit there and she'll sit there long enough and be able to come back up where I need her in order to in order to get things done and get set. So I got a rein on both sides. And I can keep her out of trouble and keep me a little safer as well. And that's the hard part with her, trying to work her close enough here to the rail I'm going to try and make the reins and be able to just get her up here with my reins on her so I don't have to mess around with tying up the reins and get her out of the spot I want her in. And be able to get down on her and sit. Oh no. See, that's the issue with having the reins. You 
not being able to if she does decide to leave I got no reins I got no length on my lead <coughs> this morning not enough. yeah she says not enough not for me either that's what I didn't want to have happen when I got there on her I was trying to get my foot in that stirrup without bumping her and my foot my foot bumped her a little bit Ooh. so that's what got her scared and that's why the groundwork and me getting my foot in that stirrup and getting up the side of her is so important and it's stuff that she hasn't quite accepted yet and that just that just equates <clears throat> that just equates to what happens when things start going wrong trying to do is just take the tension out of her settle her down here a little bit because right now she's just a ball waiting to go off so I just want to pet on her let her stand here relax keep her in a position where I can hopefully keep her shut down when she does want to move her feet a little bit and be able to bend her head and keep those hind quarters moving a little bit and keep her shut down and relaxing and eventually we'll be able to get her feet moving and get going but I don't want her to just blow up and take off and go to humping around again like she just did I don't like riding bucking horses I used to when I was a kid, when I was young and dumb, but not so much anymore. pretty well set in here I got a hold of my night latch now I got her shut down I got both feet in the stirrups finally so I'm reasonably confident that I can stay with her now unless she really blows a cork and I can't catch it so we can keep putzing around here until she settles down and figures things out and gets used to my legs and used to me being up here and used to my saddle 
and figuring out how to move her feet. The only thing I'm really worried about right now with her is not what we're doing here. What I'm worried about is being able to get off her because of the lack of work we've had and the way she wants to blow a gasket when I try and come up from the ground. She might do the same thing when I go to get off her too. And that's what we gotta hopefully prevent when I go to get down. But right now, <clears throat> right now, safest place for me to be is right where I'm at. And just keep working her feet. And little by little, getting her to take a couple steps forward and figure this stuff out. But, like I said, that's the first colt that's really done that to me in quite a long time. And I was kind of prepared for it for her. I didn't think she'd get that balled up about it. But because she's so dang touchy about her sides and coming up, and I don't know what the heck happened to her to get her that way, but it all relates to it. All of that touchiness about her side, about her sides, and getting her to figure out how to get her feet going in the right direction. <clears throat> There's all the stuff that's contributing to this. Good girl. Good girl. That big deep breath gets her relaxing. It's easy now. Easy now. I want to keep, I want to keep working. To my right, she's getting better at going to the right, but I don't want to get her balled up and crawled into a corner where she gets restricted and finds herself not being able to do anything. So, I want to try and keep her out of that corner if I can. Because if she backs up into that corner, she's going to jump forward again and get, get upset. like this, if I'd have got on and things would have went good and I'd have been able to get set, sit down on her and have her take a few steps out into the arena or out into the pen here and just kind of casually putz along and do some of this turning and getting her hindquarters to move and bending her legs a little bit and getting a few steps forward, I'd have called that a real good first ride on, on, on a horse. But with her, I'm going to have to spend some time on her on this ride to get her to figure out how she can move forward a little bit before I try and get down off of her. Otherwise, the next time I try and get on her, she's going to do the same dang thing. And Because we had that bit of an episode getting going on her, she might be a little bit tough to get back on the second time off the rail. And we might have to work a little bit harder on getting her to do something. 
good girl. See, she wants to come over to this rail because she knows this is a spot where I'm going to get on and get off when I'm on the rail. But I can't get off on the rail with her. That's just not an option, so I can't let her stay in this corner and come up to that rail and expect me to get off. notice too I'm keeping my legs way away from her I'm not giving her anything to think about but packing me around and moving her feet I might put them a little bit on her just to push her off of that corner let her push her one way or the other like that see if I put my leg up on her she gets upset about that because she doesn't see it coming or doesn't expect it and if I just took my legs and put a boot into her, <coughs> she'd go to humping off again. One advantage that I do have with her though is that she does know the one ring stop and how to get those hind quarters broke over. So that's kind of a it's a two-edged sword. When I get her head, she moves those hind quarters. But it's a little bit of a detriment to get her to start going forward. Because when I try to guide her a little bit. She just moves the hind quarters around and doesn't go forward. <clears throat> See there I'm going to lose her focus because of the babies there because she's getting a little comfortable with what we're doing and I got to misdirect that right away so that she doesn't lose track of where we are and what we're doing here. to hear that big sigh that gets her settled down and comfortable with what we're doing. Easy now. These some of the buckaroo types would have just got on. If they could have clamped down well enough and held on, they'd have just rode her through that and kept her kept her charging around until she smoothed out. And a lot of cold starting classes, they'll have the trainer will be out in the arena with a saddle horse to be able to hold that colt in place while the person's getting on on the round pen and be able to get set and screw themselves down. And there's probably 15 or 20 other colts in there that they have to work themselves around and it kind of prevents horses from really getting balled up and going to bucking and having a place to get balled up and charge off. And so they get everybody up on these colts and then the guy on the saddle horse will step back and start moving those colts around in a bunch and just keep them banging off like bumper cores and running around so the owners all they really got to do is hang on and sit there and they won't get balled up too bad because they're all moving in a bunch and they'll just kind of ride it out that way and keep their feet moving and get them going. But when you're working with a young horse like this by herself, she's got no support but me. And if something happens and they follow their instinct to charge off and get that lion off their back or whatever's bugging their sides like she did, 
you're pretty much along for the ride and you either got to buck up and take it or bail off and start again. And if I'd have bailed off and tried to start again, we'd have been in a lot worse spot than just letting her buck through it and hoping that I could stay on and get things figured out with her a little bit and get back to a good spot <clears throat> and making some progress. But I'll tell you one thing, I don't like doing that. And I would wish like hell it wouldn't have happened because it just makes it that much harder. Most colts that I've been on never take a jump when I get on them and take off for the first time. But because she's got issues with getting over the top of her and getting alongside of her and putting a foot in the stirrup, all of that stuff is playing into this with her. Because she's been ground drove too, she's a lot harder to bend and to flex and she's got some built in resistance there. See what she does when I go to bend her neck? See her jot her nose out there? That's because she was pulled on too hard when she was being ground driven and she's been backed up rather than bending and moving those moving those hind quarters around. And getting her to stop and actually stop on a one range stop. And that's why <clears throat> when she first blew up, I couldn't get a hold of her head well enough to get her bent around and kind of control that a little bit. And she got away from me and kind of took off on me. starting to get used to feeling my legs down here now and being able to put them on her a little bit without her jumping as much. I can still feel her tense up a little bit when I put a leg on her, but she's being able to figure out how to move through it and not get so balled up. We still got one issue to overcome and that's how I'm going to get down. I'm trying to get her to bend around and stop. But I don't want to get her so razzed and so she gets mad and really goes to fighting back on me. So I'm not pulling her head completely around as much as I'd want to, to get a one rain stop. Oh, oh. she's looking like she's coming along and she's pretty relaxed right now, that could all change in a heartbeat with her. Just by the way her attitude is, and I know her, what she does, she'll go along with the program for a little while and then all of a sudden the light trips off and she goes back to doing something stupid. She's like a time bomb right now. And I don't want to I've got to try and keep her 
mind occupied and directed and being calm and moving her feet around here and paying attention to me and keeping her gentle and not let her get distracted or lose my focus on where my legs are to where she's going to jump and have another episode. Normally I wouldn't direct a colt much on the first ride other than bending their head a little bit and trying to get them to take a step someplace. <coughs> and then I'd turn their head go, turn their head completely loose and just use that rein as a little bit of support if they get themselves balled up. But with her, I gotta take a little bit more control of this rein to keep her, to assure myself that she's gonna stay under control. And I got a safety valve to get her collected back up again and keep her out of trouble and keep me safer because she's not a simple one. How long has this video been? 38 minutes? Oh, nice. Well, I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to break this one, I guess. See how she goes to fight me, though, when I go to take her head? That's from a learned behavior on fighting against the reins, being ground driven and putting in that brace. So you gotta be careful. If you're gonna do that kind of stuff with your horse, don't automatically go to pulling and yanking on her or on them because you're just gonna get them to the point where they start really resist in everything you do. I know she wants a drink of water, but I can't afford to let her get her head down there and take a drink of water right now. Because when she, bought, when she puts her head down, that cinch is gonna tighten up, and then she's gonna ball up. <clears throat> and jump. Not only that, she's gonna forget about where I am. All right, the moment of truth here. I gotta try and figure out how to get off of her. <sighs> yeah, Fix taking a big breath over there too. Sweetie, you got your first ride. I gotta tie up my shoe here because she bucked my shoelaces apart. So, um, go ahead and kill the camera there and I'm gonna start another session. I'm gonna try and get her back up to the rail again. And uh, just put a leg over her and see if she can still stay settled on that rail so we can work on something again tomorrow.